I was a little freaked out and came bursting out from the kitchen around the corner. He freaked out and asked for the The bite, was it like just a quick... Stitches. I got stitches. Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here, America's Canine Educator. I'm here at the Upstate Canine Academy and we have a dog that has a bite history. This beautiful bloodhound is 99% just a lovely dog, sweet as pie. But there's this 1% where the dog owners just can't control, where he just randomly goes after the guy that he's living with. So in this episode, I'm gonna break down how to start training and start working with a dog that has a bite history, that has this unpredictable random act of aggression. So we're gonna break it down, we're gonna go over what possibly could be triggering these things as well as how to manage and go over exercise to make it better. So let's get into the video guys. Let's go. We uh, weren't told that he had a bite and aggression history because he was lunging at Tim and he has now bitten Tim also. Okay. So that's our number one issue is aggression. I read it all the body language as anxiety. What happened with the lunging to you? Well, um, as we sort of have figured out, it's overwhelmingly happened when the three of us are together. It feels a little bit like he's being protective of some space or Catherine. Mm -hmm. There was one night where I got a phone call and I was a little freaked out and came bursting out from the kitchen around the corner. He freaked out and that's when he bit me. The bite, was it like just a quick... Yeah. Stitches. I got stitches. That he's saying, don't pass here. There's a few specific spaces and circumstances where he's likely, if I cross into a space, to sort of get a look on his face. I'm always a little bit... Yeah, little I understand. Bit. When we have a behavior like this that we're unsure of the exact triggers, there's nothing that anybody in the world can do to say, this isn't going to happen again, nor do you guys ever have to worry. However, in my professional experience working with dogs with these random cases of, I'm going to do this, our job and your job is to try to isolate these things and figure out exactly a when does he do these things and what variables are in place we know getting in his space grabbing things that are subjected being his if you will the bed frantic type of oh i gotta run out of here all those things so those are things obviously that i could tell you that we have to be careful of but i would say going back to your point of if we put him on a leash and tether him to something we're safe of course because he can't get to you even if he wanted to in these types of cases when we're 95% just a mush and then 5% okay where did this come from sometimes it's neurological sometimes it's abusive of dogs who just have these PTSD flashbacks of I'm gonna get you before you get me and these things happen unfortunately so it would be in your best interest to make sure that we get the best obedience possible to make sure that we're able to get him under control when these things happen but I ultimately think too there's two different ways that this can go is one way is he's taking advantage of a particular person because he feels like he can because nobody in his life has ever told him he couldn't and actually enforced it, which is possible. So we get to a point where how do we actually correct him for doing these things to a point where he understands that these things are wrong and he understands that if he actually pursues some of the things and triggers that he does, he's going to get punished for them because oftentimes dogs who even as puppies get away with jumping, pulling on the leash, bullying people, biting, ripping clothes. Oftentimes that is started because nobody's effectively telling them that they can't do do it. I don't know everything about every dog. That would be unprofessional for me to say. However, in my experience with the thousands of dogs I have worked with, primarily isolated to behavior modification, the dogs that have come in, that can also work against you where you can correct the behavior. And he's like, okay, sorry. And sometimes that's all it takes where they're like, oh crap, I don't, I don't want to do that anymore. And you're like, well, there we go. But also it can make things worse to where he's challenging you because he feels like he can. You correct him somehow and then it gets conflicted. So then he even hits you harder, faster, stronger. What do you see? with him does he stiffen up and what's he gets he flexes a little bit and i can something in his eyes Notice. and he growls and his tail goes very fast yeah. it's like the wind yeah so i'd say there's a I, right now there's a second or two where he sort of locks in on me and he does this and then he growls and then and i would say you know six or eight times and i you know if he comes at me i turn away and he's been up on my back so, uh... My game plan is to put a little slip leash on, a little bit of food, start some leash pressure. So I'll have you guys put this on for me. Come here, sit. Good, he's so big, he's like already at my waist. So I'm just gonna put these in here. Good, good man. So I'm just leaving the leash on just in case he gets weird and you guys need to grab him, you can. So I'm just gonna create a very happy-go-lucky, hey, we're gonna hang out, heel. Uh, but I'm also applying a little bit of pressure with the slip. Otis, come, good boy, come. Yes, good boy, sit. Yes, good boy, break. So I'm just starting off with, like I would a puppy. 
like an eight week old puppy. I'm just saying, hey man, let's have some fun. Pay attention to me, I'm your guy. And that's the way I like to handle a situation to start with any dog, really, if I can, and make it fun for him and very positive. Yes, good boy, sit. So the micro is, is I'm introducing some leash pressure and I'm telling him he's gonna get paid if he sits and he pays attention. But the bigger picture in the macro is, is I'm starting to take the control away from him to me. That's my goal. Otis, come, come. Yes, good boy. Sit, yes, break. So that little, he goes out and I say come and he's like, mm, yeah, but there's something over here. I pop him. So that's like the first start of me starting to take a little bit of leverage away from him. I'm like, hey, come here. And he's like, no, pop. And he comes to me and I pay him. So I'm starting to take control of that situation. I'm gonna take it a step further and start with some threshold stuff. Threshold number one is gonna be this gate. So again, micro macro. Micro is, hey man, sit. He's like, okay, open the gate, break him through. Macro, I'm in charge. Can't just rush through the gate because it's open. Gotta pay attention to me. So again, one step further to just taking the wheel, taking the possession of the leverage back to making sure that I'm fully in charge, slowly. Good, wait. Okay, go. Good boy. I'm sure it's kind of a relief for you guys to see somebody else handle him other than you guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> Otis, sit. Good. Ah, uh -uh. sit. Good, so there. So an opportunity to finally say no sit without being too hey do this right uh, uh, nope otis sit good sit good okay go good boy all right so the next thing i'm going to do is just a very basic impulse control exercise again micro macro sit and wait okay fine i'm sitting and waiting and then i'm gonna then release him to what i want him to release to and the macro is is he's paying attention to me no matter he really wants that treat really bad but he's like i'll patiently wait for you and i'll send him to it sit wait ah uh, Wait. The goal is, is when I throw this and he waits, I'm gonna release him. That's the goal. But I'm not gonna release him until he actually waits for me. Otis, wait. Good wait. Let's see if I can get one more. Wait. Okay, go. Good man. Good boy. Good job, hound dog. Slowly, without disrespecting and being too pushy and using aversive and tools to say, this is my land, not yours. Because that's a good way to get a dog that has potentially a screw loose or PTSD or some abuse past to damage your relationship and they could come after you. Wait. Good wait. Otis. <laughs> Otis. Otis. Yes, good. Ah, uh, ah, uh, nope, perfect. Because I'm just telling him, no, you can't have that. Even though it's right in front of you and you want it really bad. And he's like, okay, I'll respect that. That's a huge win for me. Even though it looks small, it's big. Wait. Okay, go. Good boy. We're developing trust, a bond. It's healthy, it's structured. He's understanding it. He's not confused. He's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta listen. I gotta listen. It's all really, really good. Oh, he's a good boy. Oh my goodness. So handsome. Good boy. Yeah, so that's good, you know, that submission and that tells me that he trusts me at least, you know? So what I would do is now when you do this, you're gonna say wait and throw the treat at the same time, but don't say wait a bunch of different times. Wait. Do it one more time. Wait. Now when you're ready, you just release them. Okay. Good. So again, micro macro you're taking a really fun exercise safe exercise and you're saying hey you got to listen to me yeah but there's treats no you got to listen and he accepted that and he was okay with that so that was great so in this episode guys there wasn't this big change of anything it was just teaching you guys and teaching the dog owners that came in what do we do with otis what do we do with the dog who just does these behaviors what type of tools are we going to use to make things better so i hope you guys like this video i really do if you haven't yet do me a solid favor you guys like this video hit that subscribe button and we put videos out like this every single week, right, Lakota? I appreciate you guys watching. I will talk to you next time. Peace.